morning, everyone. I'm Olga Villaverde. And I'm Amber Miltz. Welcome to The Balancing Act. Well, the holidays are fast approaching. Nerves can be frayed. Budgets waylaid. Don't worry, we've got a great show full of great advice to get you through. Plus tips to keep you safe on the road. We've got all of that and more, and it all starts right now. Have you finished your holiday shopping? Are you shopping online? If so, you're not alone. In fact, 2016 holiday retail e-commerce is expected to be the busiest ever, exceeding revenues of $90 billion, up 13% from last year. But buyer beware, and we're about to explain why. Back with us is Ted Kim, an internet privacy specialist and CEO at Private Internet Access, specializing in virtual private networks, also known as VPNs. Good morning. Good morning. How Thanks are you? Thanks for being here. I'm doing great. Thank you. All right, so I'm getting my holiday shopping done as well, and I, I do use the internet. But let's be honest here, Ted. It's not just during the holidays, right? We have to be taking care of ourselves, especially when it comes to online, right, all year long. Absolutely, I mean, you're online all the time. The fact of the matter is, I mean, for me, um, I only turn my phone off to reboot it when I need to. Otherwise, it's plugged in or it's on all the time, so therefore, I'm connected at all times. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that 60% of people, um, they're thrilled when they don't have to go to a mall or a store, especially during the holidays. If you have an hour to shop, Absolutely. you don't want to spend... Absolutely, the traffic, oh, the time. The 45 minutes in a parking lot, it's forget horrible. it. And the internet is great for that, but you know, the internet safety is, is something that some of us forget. Yeah, I mean, you can't take that for granted because technology is great because it allows you to have a lot of convenience in your life. However... However, the problem is that you have, invite a lot of eyes towards your activity. Uh, the more that you're online, then you know, you, you don't know who's watching you. And I know sometimes you can go to the store and you can buy these antivirus protections for your laptops, your notebooks, but are they good? Do they really work? I don't have one. Uh, you should get one. Uh, first of all, you should get as much protection as you can. Um, the way the, those things work is that uh, antivirus software, it'll detect when somebody is trying to load some, a virus onto your computer and it'll warn you and prevent that from happening. Um, you can do other measures, uh, there are things like malware, adware, that basically protect against people stalking you and watching your activity online. You can do those things, but you have to be pretty on top of it and make sure that you update your software as much as technology is advancing. And I think that's part of the challenge. And speaking of advancements in technology, I mean, let's talk about in terms of just even using your phone. And I've seen this at people's homes. They, they, they turn on the lights. They, they open the garage door. They're not even there. They have the, the locks connected to their phones. And I sometimes think of safety with that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it goes a little bit deeper than that. I mean, I have kids myself, and so I used nanny cams uh, when they were young. I had okay. baby monitors watching. That's a good idea. And it was great. That's it's a great. great thing. The issue is you're connected to the internet, and anytime you have a device connected to the internet, um, every device has something called an IP address, and what that basically does is it identifies that device and connects it to the internet. So it's like a physical address. So if you were at home, it would be like broadcasting your home address to everybody in the world. And if somebody gets that address, then what are the repercussions? They can come into your home. Speaking of exposed, another thing I always wonder about when I go to the donut shop or I go to a coffee shop with my girls and they're on the Wi-Fi, that's also dangerous too, right, to use the Wi-Fi? That's even more dangerous because that's a network you don't control at all. I mean, anytime you're on a network that you don't control, especially mm -hmm. one that's made available to anybody to use, then, you know, you're talking about um, coffee shops, libraries, uh, hotels, airports. Um, now you have this big thing where cities all over the world, they're providing free Wi-Fi to everybody. And that's amazing. And that's, that's a great. Terrific. But, but the issue is that it's providing free Wi-Fi to everybody. So, so what do we do to bad... protect ourselves? To know that maybe if we're doing all this because it is a new age, a new world, new technology, we can feel better. Well, you, you can do those things that we talked about before. Um, the antivirus software, uh, the uh, malware and the adware, you gotta make sure everything's up to date constantly. Like, I get updates on my phone all the time, every, it seems like every six weeks or so saying update this. And at the same time, you should do those things. You can take the next step, which is to be a little more proactive about it. Um, those and are kind of so? reactive softwares. You can be proactive about it and then do things like hide your IP address so people don't know who you are. They don't know where your house is, in effect, when you're online. 
Um, you can also do something uh, that encrypts your data. Anybody who wants to try to intercept your data as it's being transmitted, okay. it comes up as gibberish, basically. So even if they capture it, it comes up as nothing. And that's something called a uh, VPN. And a VPN will do both those things. It'll hide your IP address as well as encrypt your data so that you have a privacy function as well as a security function. Tell me what VPN stands for. Virtual private network. Virtual uh, private network. So what is it? I mean, is it a, is it a gadget that I buy? Explain it. I'm not the best when it comes no, to technology. It's, but what it, all it does is it exists and you can purchase it either, either through um, through the internet, it's just a piece of software, or just like you would a shopping app or a game or something on your phone, you just download it and it, and it exists on your uh, phone as an app. And you just turn it on and you can leave it on. And so in layman terms, off. if I put this in my phone or wherever it is, my laptop, it would do what? It hides, your IP, it hides your IP address so people don't know who you are or what you're connected to. And it also encrypts your data so it provides security. So then you know that if somebody is out there and uh, you're using even a public Wi-Fi, for example, um, say you're transferring photos to your kids or yeah. your mom or family members, mm -hmm. somebody in there could intercept all that. Banking information, medical records, whatever it is that you're transmitting, somebody could take that. But with the VPN? The VPN, even if they take it, it'll be encrypted, so it comes up as gibberish. And that's what your company does? That's what we do at Private Internet Access. So it really makes a difference. It's something that someone should think about. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I mean, it's relatively cheap. Uh, it's less than a cup of coffee a month uh, to provide that protection. And you know, you can secure five devices uh, at the same time. So. If you have, you can either give it to your children, my kids' devices, their tablets. And I mean, you know you're, sure you're confident. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. they're secured and they're, everything they have is yeah. private. I'm on my phone 24 hours a day. So if my More kids reason. are on it, then why wouldn't I do that? Makes a great stocking stuffer, right? Absolutely. And it's fun, it's cheap, and it's something that at least peace gives you peace of mind, especially from a family standpoint. We're thinking together there, kid. <laughs> <laughs> For our viewers out there who'd like more information, where can they go? PrivateInternetAccess.com forward slash TBA. Thank you so much. I really learned a lot today. Thank you. And happy holidays. Happy holidays. And you can find out more about securing your online life, data, and all you hold dear with a VPN by going to PrivateInternetAccess.com forward slash TBA. As always, you can always visit our website thebalancingact.com or get social at Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans. Welcome to my kitchen. This is Quit Bites with me, Chef Ralph Pagan. Take a look at this. I've got a gooey, cheesy, warm, delicious mozzarella stick and of course, we're using ramen noodles for Marishan. Let me show you how to do it. Now check it out, first things first, Marishan ramen noodles. These are them right over here. To use them as a breading, they gotta be broken a little bit. Right here in the bag, and then slide down here, I've got my breading station going on. What do I got? Some AP flour all purpose, some beaten egg, and over here, crushed up Marishan ramen noodles. Now check it out, this is the proverbial double dip. I'm gonna take my mozzarella, roll it around in the flour, and then go into the egg. Now, make sure, this is very important, keep one hand wet and one hand dry. This, my left hand is gonna be my wet hand. I'm gonna put it back into the flour over here. Then, I'm dropping it right back into the egg. The egg is gonna be the glue that the ramen noodle gets to stick to. I've got some vegetable oil, 350 degrees right now. And I'm gonna push this mozzarella right into the ramen noodle. Now it's a real cool technique, is just use the bottom of your hand just to so delicately push the ramen noodle on top of the cheese, and that's gonna form the breading that's gonna be so crispy and delicious. It's beautifully breaded, and into the oil it goes. Wow. That's gonna be crispy, gooey, delicious, and crunchy. Now check it out, look at this mozzarella stick, it's all crispy, and there's so many different ways that you can use it. Look at this, I got a beautiful antipasto with triangle cuts of mozzarella with olives and salami and capicola and roasted peppers. Or how about for the kids, a nice treat and a nice surprise. How about some mozzarella fried with ramen noodle, a little bit of marinara sauce, and some apples for the kids. It's fun, it's crisp, and it's healthy. Look, everybody's gonna love it, and you're gonna be a superstar at your next cocktail party when you're using Marishan ramen noodles. Want to know more about this recipe and Marishan products? Check out Marishan.com or visit our website, TheBalancingAct.com. And don't forget to share your favorite ramen noodle recipes with us. Remember, ha, this has been a quick bite. But chew slowly.
According to researchers, loneliness is now an epidemic. But how can so many of us be lonely when we're surrounded with people? And add to that, we're connected constantly through texting, Facebook, Twitter, the list goes on and on, but yet we're still lonely. So what's missing? Our guests say it's time to look for a deeper, more meaningful kind of community, one in which you can explore your faith with others. It's time to go on a spiritual journey. Joining us for this discussion are Jennifer Rodia and the Reverend Gary Henderson of the United Methodist Church. Good morning to both of you. Thank you. Good morning, it's good to be here. Good to have you. Jennifer, let me start with you. Do you think there's an epidemic of loneliness, especially when we are a society that is so connected? You know, as human beings, I think we're created to be in relationship mm -hmm. with God and with each other. And even though this digital world allows us to expand our friend base in ways we never would have imagined, we still long for a deeper, more meaningful relationship. Because it's not the same. Right. And, and you know, what we see online isn't even always accurate. Research will tell us, you know, 22% of us believe that our friends online are more successful and more content than they actually are. But that's where we believe the church comes in and it can be that place where you can have those meaningful conversations and relationships. Reverend, I want to bring you in. I want to discuss religion versus spirituality. I often hear people say they're spiritual, but not religious. What's the difference between the two? The difference is this. When I say I'm spiritual, it for me is a moral compass in terms of how I live life from day to day. Mm -hmm. When I talk about religion, I think about form and institution, maybe even the way I grew up. And so when I talk about being a spiritual person, for me there is a connection to God, a place where I grow and I also feel very alive. Let's turn now to faith, a big word, faith. I have a lot of faith and I, it seems like more and more people want to explore their faith, perhaps even go on a spiritual journey. What does that look like to you? Faith is that place where we begin to understand that there's something more. Mm -hmm. And out of that understanding of there's something more, I want to know more. So it puts me on a journey. Uh, the spiritual journey has a starting place where I begin to ask perhaps difficult questions. And I may think that the difficult questions are mine alone. And I discover in community that there are others who are asking similar and difficult questions. As we grow together, we begin to evolve. Uh, I start as a beginner, perhaps even a child, into adolescence, into adulthood. The spiritual life is one where the, we evolve as a human being and we discover a vital connection with God. Jennifer, people talk a lot about uh, the desire to have a fulfilling life. It's very important. How does or how can the United Methodist Church help people achieve that? The United Methodist Church is a place where you can belong. We aspire to be open hearts and open minds and open doors. And one of the powerful ways that that's communicated is through a, a deep held belief that God's grace is available to everyone, that all are welcome at his table. Communion is completely open. And you know, Gary was talking about the questions we ask on a spiritual journey. We believe in being able to have open dialogue you know, on a shared faith foundation where we can really discuss things that matter. And also we have a strong foundation in serving one another. That's how we show God's love is by putting our beliefs into action. So the church is a place that has real relevance in people's lives, Reverend? There is real relevance in the church and I connect that to the way in which we see this church growing today. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer? You know, for me, I like to remember that the church is not a building. It's really about the people. And I've experienced that so much in my life. When I first moved to New York City, one of the first things I did was find United Methodist Church. And it helped me to deal with all of the need that I saw around me. I couldn't walk to the subway without seeing someone who really needed some assistance. And the church grounded me. It gave me friendships. It gave me a way to act on that service. There were teachings that really helped make me who I am today. And then years later, when my son was born with some life-threatening complications, mm. that, and all of my family lived out of state, the church surrounded me and really became a second family. People of faith putting their belief into actions, it makes God's love tangible in this world. They were there for you. Yes. Indeed. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I do appreciate it. How is your son today, if I may ask? He is truly a miracle. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend, for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. For more information on the United Methodist Church, its community outreach, and exploring your faith, visit RethinkChurch.org. That's RethinkChurch.org. Or you can go to our website, TheBalancingAct.com.
you're heading off to college and you need to know the best ways to get around, no worries. Our pros from West Texas A&M University join us with some great tips to get you from point A to point B and beyond. Did you know from our pros? How does one get easily from point A to point B on college campuses? That's a question with many moving parts. And I don't know about you, but when I picture a college campus, I see kids walking, not driving, from class to class. Well, now students are finding lots of ways to get around campus. There's longboarding and kick scooters and skates and bikes. If there's a uniqueness to a student, there's a uniqueness to the way that they get around. So what is the best way to get around on campus, you ask? My favorite mode of transportation is riding my bike. I live about a block off campus, so it gets me anywhere in a minute or two. And I also don't exercise that much, so it keeps me pretty fit. My favorite transportation on campus is my campus cruiser. I park a few blocks from here, so it's nice to get to class on time. The only thing I don't like about it is when it rains, and then I get my stuff all wet. But other than that, it's perfect. Now getting back to, in my opinion, are the best ways to maneuver. Why do this when you can do this? or this. Time for a bonus. These students are exercising and staying fit. What a great way to avoid the freshman 15. Happy trails! Look for more Did You Know from our pros. Brought to you by West Texas A&M University. And speaking of getting around, car safety is paramount, whether it's the air in your tires or the fluids in your engine. Absolutely. So we're kicking off a new series of automotive safety tips, courtesy of our friends at Sears Auto Center. Take a look. Are you flashy and built for speed? Or maybe a safety seeker? Personally, I'm all about comfort. I'm not talking shoes, I'm talking tires. Hi, I'm Jenny Eisenman, and I've got some great tips on tires from Sears Auto Center. Take the digital tire journey on SearsAuto.com. There are so many tires to choose from, and a lot of factors to go into making the right choice for you and your vehicle. The digital tire journey shows you your driving style and recommends the tires that fit your lifestyle. Maybe you're a high performer looking for superior control, handling, agility, and speed in both wet and dry conditions. Or maybe you're a value seeker who likes maximum value and fuel economy without compromising tread life or safety. It also helps you determine the differences in features such as ride quality, durability, or the warranty. Ready to purchase? You can schedule an appointment to meet with one of the Sears Auto Center tire experts. And of course, SearsAuto.com makes buying easy as well. You can also check out how real customers are rating their tires to help you make an informed decision. The digital tire journey is like having your own personal shopper for tires, which is almost as good as having your own personal shopper for shoes. For more information, go to SearsAuto.com or TheBalancingAct.com. With the holidays right around the corner, here's a great addition to your kitchen or beyond. One that'll help you keep your friends and family in great spirits. The Magic Chef 24 inch wine and beverage cooler is easy to use, affordable, and a great look for any household. Just think of it as a small refrigerator, but with the elegance of a wine cellar. It has interchangeable shelves and racks, which make it convenient to store wines and beverages. You can have sodas for the kids, water, juices, and of of course, fancy Chardonnays, Merlots, Cabernets. And take a look at this, an easy touch digital control panel with dual LED displays. So you can adjust the temperatures. The door frame is made of stainless steel with a fingerprint proof finish. Magic Chef has been around since 1929, focusing on small appliances. For more information, go to magicchef.com and as always visit our website, thebalancingact.com. That's our show for today. Go out and make it a great day. And remember to head to our Facebook page and our website. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter because we've got lots more there. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.